uh, theater currently sells tickets at a price of eight dollars and sells a thousand tickets per show it's estimated that for each 10 cent decrease in price an additional 20 tickets will be sold question is what price should the theater charge what price should the theater charge to maximize its revenue okay so the first thing we need to know is revenue what does that mean and the revenue is equal to the price you're going to charge times the quantity that you're going to sell the money that you have coming in is equal to how much you're going to charge for it times how many that you sell and it's our job to maximize revenue so let's set up some variables price let's use P and instead of Q for quantity let's use X okay and these guys are related to each other price and quantity are related they're related by what's called the demand equation and for simplicity's sake what we're going to do is assume that it's uh, linear and P is going to behave like Y for the line equation and X is going to behave like X does and so we have this set up here where it has to be sloping down because as price goes up the quantity demanded goes down if if the price goes up on something you're not going to want as much and you're not going to sell as much and so um, the quantity sold will go down and other other way around if the price price goes down then the quantity sold should go up and this is called the demand equation in the uh, first sentence it says that um, when the price is eight dollars they're going to sell a thousand tickets and so that's a point that's on this line with a uh, eight being the price that's a y value and thousand being the quantity of tickets that's the x value okay and what we want to do is get the slope of this line um, you know usually slope will be the um, given between two points we have one point but we don't have another point if you keep reading the problem it says exactly what the slope is if there isn't you know slope is defined to be the change in the y over the change in x the change in the price divided by the change in the quantity and in the next sentence they tell you it's estimated that for each 10 cent decrease in price so when price goes down by 10 cents so in our formula in the numerator we'll have a negative 0 0.10 for cents price goes down by 10 cents an additional 20 tickets will be so so we're going to change in quantity for the denominator to be 20. And we need to take this fraction and, and write it in a reasonable manner. Decimals and fractions mixed in together, not good. We need to move the decimal point over. And so let's first uh, move it over twice just to, to make it uh, 10. Now we could have just we could just move it over once, that'll work too. But um, move it over twice to get it in terms of dollars. And we have uh, 10, and that'll be over 2,000. Still negative though. But then, of course, we could have canceled out those zeros. It wasn't necessary to move it over twice. We actually could have just moved it over once. And so the slope is negative 1 over 200. That's the slope. And what we're going to do is find the demand equation to see how price and quantity are related. And so the demand equation will go with point slope form. We have a point and we have a slope. So we put these together. The formula for point slope is y minus y1 is m times x minus x1. But we're going to go with P minus P1 is M times X minus X1. And our P1 is 8. Our uh, X1 is 1,000. So P1 is 8. X1 is 1,000. And then the slope is negative 1 over 200. So we plug those guys in. And we get this equation. P minus 8 is equal to negative 1 over 200 times the quantity of X minus 1,000. And we we'll just distribute across. We have negative one over two hundred times x, and we we'll have to multiply negative one over two hundred times a thousand. If you take negative one over two hundred times it by a thousand, we can cancel out the two zeros, and we basically have ten over two, which is five. Now. You the um, the thousand was negative as well, and so the negative here and the negative here gives us a plus, a five. 
And then, you know, y equals mx plus b, we just need to take this 8 and ship it over by subtract. Uh, it's already been subtracted, so we have to add it. And we'll add 8 here, too. So here's our equation for the line, the demand equation. P, the price, is directly related to quantity by this formula, negative 1 over 200x plus 13. You give me the quantity, and I'll be able to spit out a reasonable price, the price that should go along with that quantity. And that's the relationship called the demand equation. And we need that. Why do we need that? We need that because currently this quantity that we want to maximize, revenue, is a function of two variables. We take our P price, we take our X quantity, and we multiply them together. But now we have a formula for price in terms of quantity. And so we're going to go up and substitute that in so we can have a single variable equation and be able to maximize it. So we have revenue is price times quantity, and price is negative 1 over 200, x plus 13. Quantity is x, so we take the price, we multiply it by x, and that gives us our revenue function. Price as a formula of quantity. We we'll distribute the x across, it just makes it negative 1 over 200, x squared, and 13x. And this is what we like to maximize. So what we do, we take the derivative, we set equal to zero, we solve for x, and we make an argument as to why that is actually a maximum, the absolute maximum, not just any maximum. And so here we go. Take the derivative, what do we do? We bring down the 2, we get negative 2 over 200x, and then 13x. Great. And we'll simplify that. And this, is, this here, this quantity the derivative of revenue, how revenue changes over time is uh, used so often, it's got, it has its own name, it's called marginal revenue. And so we're going to set this equal to zero and solve, and what we'll get is negative 13 is equal to negative 1 over 100x, by canceling the twos, and then times everything by negative 100, and we get that x is 1300. Great. If you stop there, technically you haven't officially finished the problem out. There's more we need to do. We need to prove that we've maximized it. And we have to answer the question that they ask. This question says what price should be set so that revenue is maximized. We have a quantity. 1,300 tickets need to be sold to maximize revenue. But we don't have a price. If we have a quantity, how do we get the price? Plug it into the demand equation. So if P is negative 1 over 200 times X plus 13, plug in X is 1300, and you'll get the pre, you get the price that goes along with that quantity. If the zeros cancel out, we get negative 13 over 2 plus a 13, or negative 6.5 plus a 13. We're talking about dollars, so let's call it negative 6.50, but that's it's half a 13. So we add the 13 on, and we just get $6.50. That's the price that you should charge in order to maximize revenue. We need to prove we maximized it. How do we know for sure that we've maximized it? This one, we can take the following approach. This equation for revenue, this equation for revenue is a parabola. But more than that, it's a parabola that opens down because of this negative here. And so, what you found was a local max. Right? When you set the derivative equal to zero and and officially, if we want to go through the steps, we have the derivative here, and we have 1,300, and the derivative is positive on the one side, and it's negative on the other side. Officially, what we have is a local max at this point, but this local max is actually an absolute max because of the fact that this is a parabola that opens down. So this local max, you can never get above that. The local max that occurs at 1,300 is actually the absolute max, the biggest a function ever gets. When your when your function is a parabola that opens down, you can just use this argument that the revenue um, equation has a graph that's a parabola, and uh, when it opens down like that, this this local max becomes the absolute max. Um, that works out well. So there you have it. We have we should charge six dollars and fifty cents to maximize revenue, and we prove that it's a maximum.